Nintendo is filing for what looks to be new crazy peripherals for the Switch 2. Sonic has another presentation tomorrow, which should be fun. And The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, it was originally Zelda Maker. So good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Lots of cool, great news to discuss with you all today, including the return to the weird portable peripheral era for Nintendo. If that happens, sign me the heck up. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hit that like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you haven't. All that stuff helps the channel keep on chugging along and rolling as we work through the latest Nintendo news. I gotta kick it off with Zelda Maker because this kind of blew my mind. It's a little bit sad, but at the same time, I think it's really good. If they were initially targeting Echoes of Wisdom to be a Zelda Maker type game, I think the creativity is probably like way up there for the dungeons. And it goes to show why the focus and the emphasis on the dungeons so freaking sweet they're doing their developer talks series for echoes of wisdom revealing a bunch of new details about the development process of the game which is always super cool and they're talking about how this was initially going to be a zelda maker there was an edit dungeon thing where you could create their own legend of zelda gameplay it was a focus on copy and paste gameplay and it looked pretty darn sweet you could all of a sudden put all of these different items and different like i guess mechanics in the dungeons and then they shifted it to be from creating dungeons to copy and pasting items as tools to further your own adventure that's from awanuma directly that they did move kind of from this make your own dungeon style game to using the copy and paste for the actual adventuring which is what we've got in echoes of wisdom with the tri rod and all of the echoes that you can use but a Zelda Maker game is so close to heroic awesomeness. After the two Mario Maker games, I think were all in all stellar. A Zelda Maker would be pretty freaking sweet. Now they tried to do a little bit of Zelda dungeon stuff with Link's Awakening, but it was nowhere near where it needed to be. And it's not a Zelda Maker. I think everybody has wanted Nintendo to do like a Metroid Maker, a Zelda Maker, a Mario Kart Maker, some other sort of Maker. And so on one hand, it's a super bummer that we're not getting the Maker. On the other hand, I think it just goes to show how cool these dungeons are going to be. And it shows that Nintendo has this idea and that it was allowed. Like, they didn't shut it down. They were working along that path for at least some period of time. And that means to me, like, maybe they could do a Zelda Maker follow-up and kind of take the beginnings of those ideas and remix them in a way that doesn't feel like Echoes of Wisdom, of course, but goes back to the making dungeons, making Zelda boss battles, making Zelda item hunts, and do something really cool that could incorporate online the same way Mario Maker has to build an awesome community and just such a fun, unique way to explore the Legend of Zelda. I'm super pumped for Echoes of Wisdom, so we don't have to like wish that it was a different game or anything, but anytime they say Maker, I'm like, ears perk up, because Nintendo's only said Maker with Mario, but now they've talked about Zelda Maker and like, please, eventually, Awanuma and co, please make it happen. Now, we will have happening a Sonic Central tomorrow that's going to be September 24th at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, giving a sneak peek of upcoming projects, partnerships, and events happening through 2025. So there's going to be a bunch of new announcements as well as probably some follow-ups on things like Sonic X Shadows Generations, and it's going to be for 2024 games as well as 2025. So I wonder if we get a tease of the next big Sonic thing, which... I personally think should and will be Sonic Frontiers 2. I think they really actually set a good foundation there, even if it was a little lackluster in some ways, for an exciting new 3D Sonic. And that game was better than I think it had any right to be, even though it's a bit clunky and a bit like stuck in sort of some of the, some of the Sonic muck. It did feel very fun to play, in my opinion, and that's kind of all you need. If it's fun to play, they can work on the peripheral, like extra features, right? They can work on the map, they can work on filling out the environment, they can work on some of the quests and some of the objectives, but it was fun to move around in that space as Sonic, and I thought they did a good job with that, so I would be really stoked if we got to see Sonic Frontiers 2. Either way, I'll be checking into this presentation and reporting back with what they show you. Now, the big news of the day, though, is Nintendo filing for some sort of creepy, weird, wireless thing, USB-C, and this ties into Switch 2 for many reasons. All right, so let me roll it back. Nintendo has filed with the FCC a mysterious new wireless device that is not the Switch 2. Okay, so this is more than filing a patent. Let's get that very clear. Nintendo patents a lot of things and then they don't come to fruition. And myself, like I've even said many times, like if Nintendo patents it and it's made public, probably not going to become a product. 
This is different because they're filing it. They're not patenting it. They filed this application with the FCC and it comes with an embargo, a confidentiality request set for March 2025. So this thing cannot be publicized until late March 2025, which is very ironic given we got a Switch 2 thing coming and think it might be releasing or at least getting a ton of marketing around that time. And if it was tied to it, wouldn't that be perfect kismet that March is when this thing can become unwrapped? So if it is indeed an accessory, that would make a lot of sense given what we saw of the recent Switch 2 leaks. One of the more interesting but subtle features of the new Switch, besides like the nice larger screen, the more rounded Joy-Con, the magnetic connectors, was a USB-C port on the top of the system. Now, we've got the USB-C connector on the bottom for it to plop into the dock and for it to charge. Some people thought the top USB-C connector was just for ease, like better charging. It's, you know, makes more sense to come off the top like the Steam Deck than the bottom like the Switch. But then we had different reports, including from the Chinese YouTuber who made the 3D printed model, that it could be some sort of camera device. And we've heard about this camera thing for a while now. There's been these small rumors throughout the months of Nintendo utilizing some sort of camera technology with the Switch 2. And it was like, is it for VR? Is it for some sort of like motion tracking? Is it, what's it for? Is it gonna be a Game Boy camera, take a goofy picture of your face and print it out via the other USB port on the Switch? Now that this is some wireless device, people are getting really curious what it's for. And it seems like maybe Nintendo is actually gonna be prepping multiple peripherals for the Switch 2 that can take advantage of that top USB-C port. Now this to me makes perfect sense and is very exciting because when Nintendo gets weird with peripherals, I think we all win. Like you can hate on Labo as much as you want, but the first time I built those cardboard sets, I thought that was really cool. The first time I got to hold up the cardboard VR goggles on my Switch, I was like, dude, Nintendo just does magical stuff. If you've seen things like Mario Kart Home Circuit, like they do make weird toy type devices work well. And if you remember the e-reader or you remember the Game Boy camera, those were actually really cool peripherals that just added an extra layer of Nintendo sizzle and things that currently Xbox and PlayStation definitely aren't going to mess with. Accessories and peripherals have kind of died down. We don't even get plastic guitars anymore. So if Nintendo were to dive back into this space, I think that'd be really neat. It's also a great way to allow Nintendo to get creative with their gimmicks, but not attach it directly to the hardware. And even though like Zach, it is gonna attach directly to the hardware via USB-C, I mean like not be a part of the hardware itself. So you don't have to dedicate this entire system to some wonky idea. That's what kind of made the Wii U partially fail was like, okay, it was so committed to this gamepad and then not a lot of developers wanted to take advantage of it. If you leave the Switch as cool hybrid console with better performance and awesome processing power, that's all you need. But oh wait, if you wanna be Nintendo weird, you wanna dive into the peripheral marketplace, you can because you just attach it to the top. Whether that's a camera, whether that's some sort of VR thing, whether that's some sort of motion tracking, I don't really know. Now this wireless device specifically supposedly talks about like sensing gestures and human presence and movement, which is very, very odd. So I'm not really sure how this is going to work with a game. Again, it seems like it's some sort of like, is it AR, is it VR? They're doing something very bizarre here. But I like the idea that maybe this is just one of many. Maybe they are going to utilize this new line of products given the code CLO001 and then they could have CLO002, CLO003 and utilize that other USB-C port. Because why do you need two USB-C ports? Think about it. If that Switch 2 mock-up slash Switch 2 prototype is real, which even Digital Foundry is saying, go, it is real, then why two? You could have just moved it to the top. You don't need it on the top and the bottom. If it's bottom dock, top charge, that seems a little bit excessive and kind of like not a clean design. I think it's gonna be for peripherals to pop into the top. And I don't know exactly what they're all gonna do, but there could be a camera. There could be this weird motion movement sensor that they're talking about with this 24 gigahertz MM wave sensor that is the wireless device being filed with the FCC under secret service protection until March, 2025. What else could they bring? Could they bring some sort of device that allows you to, I don't know, attach a second screen? Is that asking too much? Probably, but I don't know, it's plausible. Could you plug in some sort of game specific, like, I don't know, like a Mario extra set of buttons, a Zelda extra set of controls. Nintendo's done weird things. Maybe bring back the vitality sensor. 
I'm trying to think of some way that could integrate with another piece of Nintendo hardware, but there, there really isn't any. It's just the Switch. And this definitely isn't going to be some sort of backwards compatibility device. That's just going to happen naturally via the eShop or a system transfer. But this is very interesting. And also, even if you don't care about peripherals, even if you think Nintendo being quirky is not your taste, this just puts more more and more on the fire of Nintendo getting ready to reveal the Switch 2 and the Switch 2 coming in the first half of 2025. Why are they filing this now? Why is it being listed as confidential until late March 2025? Well, it would seem like all of this is leading to a Switch 2 reveal, and I know nobody likes to hear that, but early October, baby. Early October seems to be the time. This week is taken up by Sonic, Level 5, State of Play, Legend of Zelda... Maybe they're going to let Tokyo Game Show pass. Maybe they're going to let Echoes of Wisdom pass. Maybe they're going to let this FCC filing pass and then reveal it in October when they've got the whole month to themselves and say, hey, Mario Party, like, you were going to buy Mario Party anyways, weren't you? If you've got a family and Switches, if you've got friends, if you like partying it up, dice block throwing, and a lot of angry players when the star doesn't go to who it's supposed to after the fact, then they can still reveal the Switch too. I think this is super cool, super exciting, and I'm geeked for new Nintendo peripherals just fun things to do that kind of tie back to Nintendo's more esoteric era, which I feel like they've gotten away from to their credit. I don't think it should be baked into the console. I think as a peripheral, though, now we're talking. Let me know what you think. Would you be down for some Nintendo cameras, some Nintendo printers, some peripherals you could plug into the top of your Switch? Are you excited to see what they reveal when this is finally unsealed? And do you think it means that the Switch 2 reveal is actually close once again? Let me know your take in the comments down below, everybody. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you lots. Switch Force, out.